This is Mrs. Gangel, and I will be reading chapters 41 and 42. Chapter 41 Morning emerged slowly, heavy with clouds. A light rain had fallen just before dawn, soothing my leaves, if not my mood. Oddly, the ground felt saturated. Spring was always muddy, of course, but this was unusual. It would make for a messy wishing day tomorrow. An early rising old gentleman with a bamboo cane approached. He paused to attach a small piece of blue paper to my lowest branch, using a bit of twine. He didn't say his wish aloud, so I couldn't tell what it was, but he had a satisfied smile as he stepped carefully through the soggy grass. No doubt I'd be seeing more wishes today. Many people came early to grab an easy-to-reach spot. This would probably be my last wishing day. How could it be that my first one, that long ago day, with Maeve, still seemed as fresh in my heart as my conversation with Stephen and Samar from the previous night? A car slowed to a crawl near the curb. I saw an arm, a blur, and then, splat, something hit my trunk. Splat, splat, two more times, and the car roared off with, screech of t with a screech of, t of tires. Bongo was the first to report, th report on the damage. Raw eggs, she said. I'm assuming that didn't hurt. Didn't feel a thing, I said. Fresh Fresh baked bread, hairy spiders, and Big U went ventured out big and Big U ventured out to inspect the situation. Big U slipped under the police tape and licked one of the yolks sliding down my trunk. Mmm, she murmured. Raw, just the way I like them. Hey, Big, share the wealth, Harry Spider snapped as she and and Fresh joined her. Agnes watched from, from her perch. I'd much prefer a squirming mouse pup, she said. It's all yours, lady. What a nice surprise, Big U said between slurps. This is not nice, Bongo said. This is people at their worst. Still, said Harry Spiders, licking her paws, it'd be a shame to let perfectly good egg, egg goo go to waste. One creature's nastiness is another creature's nibble. Big U gave a satisfied burp, and the animals scampered back to their homes. The door to Stephen's house opened. He walked over to me, saw the eggshells scattered like puzzle pieces, and scowled. Samar was next. A backpack slung over her shoulder, and books clutched to her chest. She leapt over a muddy puddle and joined Stephen. Jerks, he muttered, gesturing toward the egg remains. Sorry, Samar. But Samar held up her hand. Stephen, she said. Last night. Stephen nodded ever so slightly, his eyes locked on me. Last night, he repeated, as if they were speaking in code. The, the tree. The tree. You heard what I heard, Samar asked. I did. And Samar looked right at Stephen. You heard the tree. I heard the tray. Samar gave a little nod. So it was. Maybe a trick? Somebody playing a joke on us? Or maybe we were both sleepwalking at the same moment, Stephen suggested. He nodded as if trying to convince himself. Yeah, sleepwalking. Have you ever, sle have you ever sleepwalked before? No, but there's a first time for everything. They stood there, looking at me expectantly, willing, willing me to speak. At least that's how it felt. I stayed silent. I'd said my piece, and I regretted it. Stephen, Samar said, whatever happens, we can't tell a soul about this. Deal? Deal. Ever? Ever. Samar sighed. People would say we were crazy. And, well, they'd probably be right, said Stephen. Samar jutted her chin at me. Tree, do you have anything to add? I didn't say a word. Samar and Stephen shared a smile, figured it was worth a shot, she said. They headed off to school together. Stephen's father came out to the porch. He was holding a cup of coffee. He caught sight of Stephen and Samar and frowned. 
A moment later, Samar's mother stepped out of the blue house, her keys jingling, a briefcase over her shoulder, and she followed her neighbor's gaze. Both parents watched in silence until Stephen and Samar, walking side by side, disappeared from, from view.